Rise up, Rapids. All right, we got another video coming for you. This time we are celebrating some of the special accomplishments that came from the Swim and Tri Winter Championships hosted by h 2 Oki Swim in uh, Christiansburg in December. And man, oh man, do we have some good swims there. But we only had 22 athletes in the meet because we were limited on how many we could bring. But they, they absolutely brought it. It was awesome. But I've got a few things to share with you that go beyond the junior national qualifying times or the swimmer who got their quad A swim or the swimmer who blew away their best time. I got some other cool stories for that I want to share with you. Um, let's talk about a young girl named Maggie Caton. Right, so Maggie, earlier in the week, she had broken her pinky finger. And Maggie's only 11. And Maggie is about the size of my pinky finger to begin with. So you can imagine how much losing a pinky finger and having her, her uh, fingers taped together made swimming difficult. Right on day one, when she came straight from the doctor, she was ready to get back in the water. And this was only a few days before the meet. Didn't even once let it enter her mind that she wasn't gonna be able to do well. And it did hold her back, there's no doubt about it, but she just kept plugging. She kept a great attitude, kept listening to the advice and kept plugging and actually ended up with the best time over the weekend when she had every reason in the world not to. So Maggie, very proud of you. Keep up the great work. Uh, we did have a lot of other swimmers who overcame some adversity throughout the weekend. You know, when we were in Warrington, we had a large crew. It was really energetic. It was really exciting. We were in Christiansburg, a lot smaller crew, right? So if one swim doesn't go the way some of us wanted to do, it really affects the entire crew. And we had a, a few situations where the swimmers were, you know, not feeling very happy or they weren't, you know, really particularly proud of the swim that they had. And in just about every single situation, we had a good talk and the swimmers figured things out and they rallied behind each other and ended up having a lot of really great races. Uh, so I'm really proud of the swimmers for their mental toughness at that meet, especially those that came back and uh, just kicked booty on all of the races after going through something difficult. I do wanna give a quick shout out to uh, Poseidon. They are our friends to the, well actually they're friends to the north and to the south. Um, some, some of our swimmers from the Rapids had swam with Poseidon and before, and we were, had one of our athletes who was uh, swimming the 500 freestyle, and we had a, uh, one of our swimmers was supposed to count for that athlete, but I think they got caught up uh, in getting ready for their race, and they had uh, missed counting, and the Poseidon swimmers just, without even hesitating, jumped right up and grabbed the the counter and started counting and actually had three or four of them cheering for the swimmer that was in the water. I love that. I want to see that good positive relationship with our rapid swimmers and all the swimmers in the area. So Poseidon swimmers that counted, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Uh, we did have another swimmer who learned a really great lesson. This is one of the weird things about swimming, but when you're a young boy, uh, you know, teenage boy for example, and you're looking to swim really, really fast, it sounds kind of old school, but it's, it still works. You gotta shave, you gotta shave your legs down. It really does. And people think, how much does shaving that hair really matter? Well, it's a whole lot more than that. I'm not gonna get into the science behind it, but it works. And a young man named Blake Newton, who's 13, and I totally understand, he was weary about it, he wasn't really sure, and he's like, I don't really know if I wanna do it if, it, if, I, don't, if I don't know if it works. And I said, we're not just gonna ask you to shave your legs if it doesn't work, right? So go ahead and give it a shot. He did. Blake. I mean, he just blew it out of the water every single race. We're talking six, seven, eight second drops in the 100s, and he was just on fire all weekend long. Now, granted, that's not only because he shaved his legs. He has also worked hard leading up to that point, but great job, Blake, for, for trusting your coaching, trusting your training, and really putting together a good meet. Finally, last but not least, I got to give an extra shout out to the, I'm calling them the, the Snowmageddon squad. So the swim meet, the, those of you who know, you're probably looking around, there's still snow on the ground right now. Um, we had that big storm come through, through Christiansburg, um, Saturday evening into Sunday. So I think the meet went from about 1,100 swimmers down to about 100 on Sunday morning because most people elected to leave and get out of town before it got too dangerous to drive home. And, and uh, we had four swimmers that stuck around and swam through it. It was snowing all over the place um, outside, but on the inside, we were just having a lot of fun. We're watching you know, some fun YouTube videos, hanging out, cheering for each other. And we actually, as a team, those four swimmers had a unicorn meet. So that was uh, Nora Pasquale, 
Annalise Mears, Emmy Wells, and Colin Mark. So shout out to you guys for being my Snowmageddon squad and blowing it up in every single race that you did. I'm, in particular, I'm just glad you guys made it home safely because I know how treacherous that drive was because uh, I had to make it myself. But anyway, great job, everyone. We look forward to sharing more with you uh, after the new year.